Hey guys, Johnny from Worship Sound Guy here. So today we're going to be doing a little tutorial on how to get a crisp, clear, and clean female vocal. So the vocals are the backbone of your mix, and for good reason. They're going to carry the melody, they're going to carry the words you want people to sing along with, and they really provide the foundation and cornerstone of your mix. So if they're not right, chances are the rest of your mix isn't going to come together the way you want it to. So today we're going to be working with the lead vocal that I recorded live at my home church. We recorded straight into tracks live, so at first what you're gonna hear is just the raw vocal straight off the microphone. Nothing special about it. So we're gonna work with some EQ and some strategic multi-band compression and we're gonna get a vocal that sounds crisp and clean and amazing. Let's listen to the raw vocal and see what we're working with. Okay, let's take a listen to the verse vocal. You were a lover before time's beginning you gave your love freely with holding nothing, Jesus. Okay, so right off the bat, it's not bad, but there's a lot that we can do with it. Let's go ahead and listen to my actual board mix from when I mixed it on Sunday and take a look at kind of where I ended up in the moment as I was mixing live. Okay, so it's much more smooth and clean. So here's the trick with this, is I'm gonna do most of my work on this vocal using just EQ and a little bit of multiband compression. So there's nothing really super fancy going here with effects or any like uh, massive amounts of compression or anything. So let's take a look and jump in and see what we've got. So the first plugin I'm gonna pull up is a classic. It's the Waves SSL channel. If you've been around the live audio game for any length of time, you've probably seen this before. So the great thing about working with a plugin like this is that whether you've got an analog console or you're working with the latest, greatest wave server that can run a ton of plugins, you have something that looks like this. It's a four channel parametric EQ and that's actually gonna do most of the work on this vocal. So when it comes to female vocals, there are three areas that I almost always run into issues on. The first one is with kind of the low mid range. You'll get a lot of mud and just lack of clarity that comes from having too much building up in that region. The second is we'll run into what I like to call kind of a boxy frequency. It literally sounds like the singer is singing like into a cardboard box. Sometimes that's because of mic technique or the particular mic that you're using, but it's almost always present in vocals and it's something we want to take a look at. And third, I wanna address any harsh frequencies in the upper mid range. These are the ones that come across as kind of shrill and piercing, and they can really be fatiguing on the ear if they're not dealt with. So first, let's deal with the mud. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a low cut filter going. Let's listen to this, I'm gonna sweep it up, and we're gonna decide where to place this. You were a lover before time's beginning. You gave you a love free. Okay, I think that sounds really good. Now, 200 might be a little bit higher than you might typically be used to low cutting if you're on a vocal, but with a female vocal, there's really not much down there below that frequency. So if you're on a male vocal or a lower male vocal especially, you might not wanna go that high, but with this female vocal, that's pretty safe. Next, let's check out some of that mud that's going on. Um, it's usually around the 300 or 250 hertz range, so I'm gonna address that with this low mid knob. Let's boost it and hear what it sounds like. You were a lover before time's beginning. You gave... Okay, so we don't want any of that. That sounds gross. It just sounds like there's a blanket over her voice. So let's kind of cut some of that out, maybe like 5 or 6 dB, and let's see what happens. You were a lover before time's beginning. 
So just a four and a half dB cut right there at 300 hertz ended up being plenty. So one thing to remember when you're cutting that low mid mud, that's also kind of the range that the body of the vocal lives in. So if you cut too much, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna sound thin and just not very powerful at all. Especially when she's lower in her register, we don't wanna take away too much of that or it's just gonna lose all the life of the vocal. Next, I'm hearing a boxy frequency. Usually that's somewhere under 1K, generally in like the 1K to 500 Hertz region. Let's go ahead and listen to that and see if we can find it. You were a lover before time's beginning. You gave you a love freely with holding the... Okay, so the main part that I hear right there that jumps out at me as being undesirable is right there. Uh, looks like it's around 600 hertz. Let's cut that and hear what happens. You were a lover before time's beginning. You gave you a love freely with holding nothing. So just a small cut right there can do wonders. That was only 3 dB, but it really cleans out the mid-range of the vocal, and it allows the frequencies that do sound good to shine through. One thing I always like to stress is that, especially on a vocal, I'm gonna start by cutting what sounds bad. A lot of people wanna go in, and it's really fun to crank the high end, and I get that, but it's not the best way to EQ a vocal. So what I wanna do is I wanna take away what sounds bad or what's interfering with like the true sound of the vocal. Then after I do all that, if I need to, I can make a little high end boost or make any other adjustments that I need. But I wanna strip away what's bad first. So now that we've got that, let's do try a little high end boost. Let's go ahead, um, I'm gonna go right here with my high frequency shelf. Um, let's start right here, uh, right around 6K and see what happens. You were a lover before time's beginning. You gave you a love freely with holding nothing, Jesus. So that sounds really good in this part of the song, where it's down, her voice is quiet, there's not a lot of stage noise going on, but when the song builds and she gets louder, we introduce more bleed from other instruments on the stage, maybe her voice kind of goes up in register, that's gonna get really harsh really quick. Let's listen to that and then figure out a way around it. Okay, let's take a listen to the chorus where she goes up and let's see what happens now with that big high end boost. It's extravagant, it doesn't make sense, won't ever comprehend the way you love us. Okay, so that's not gonna be okay there. That's like harsh city. Your congregation will get so tired and ear fatigued listening to that, so we're gonna have to do something about it. I love like the airiness of the high end with that boost, but what I don't like are some kind of piercing high mid frequencies. So what we're gonna do to try to kind of keep the best of both worlds on that, like keep the air, but get rid of the harshness, is we're gonna go in with some strategic multiband compression. Okay, so here's one of my other favorite Waves plugins. It's the C6. This has got to be one of the most popular plugins for live use, but even if you don't have a Waves bundle, um, so you're just running something like an X32, you can definitely find uh, they've got a multiband compressor built in on the console. So uh, if you're running almost any digital console, you'll have something like this. And if you're unfamiliar with what a multiband compressor does, essentially it's just a compressor that only works on a certain frequency. So what that means is that if a certain frequency range gets too loud, like say like a, a harsh upper mid-range spot in this case, it'll clamp down and turn down the volume of just that one little frequency range. So let's take a listen to two ranges that I identified on this particular vocal that I want to deal with. I'm going to use the two floating bands uh, and solo it out so you can listen. Here's the first one. It's extravagant. It doesn't make sense. 
Okay, so that's one that's gonna really fatigue the listener's ear. It's right around 4K, and I've found that on especially female vocals, that's a really common spot to have issues with harshness. Let's listen to one other. It's extravagant. It doesn't make sense. Won't ever comprehend. So that's just a little resonant spot in her voice. It's just below 800 hertz, and it's kind of uh, in that boxy range that we dealt with earlier, but it's a little more pronounced at certain parts of the songs. I don't wanna go ahead and EQ that out necessarily, but I think this is gonna be a great way to take it out when it does get to be too much. So with each of these, let's adjust our range to let it do, I don't know, maybe four and a half dB of compression each one. Let's see what that does. It's extravagant. It doesn't make sense. Won't ever comprehend the way you love us. It's unthinkable. I love using multiband compression like that. It's a great way to just get in there and surgically take care of some frequency ranges that are causing issues. I don't even necessarily need it to like shape my whole vocal. I use mostly just a regular parametric EQ for that. But what it's great for is taking those ranges that get out of control sometimes and keeping them locked in and under control. Let's take a listen one more time to what we've done on this. So far we've done a little work with our low mid, high mid, high frequency, and low cut filters, and we've done a little bit of multi-band compression. Let's hear what it was like before. You were a lover before time's beginning. And with the EQ and multi-band engaged. You were a lover before time's beginning. You gave your love freely with holding nothing. That's like a night and day difference to me. I love how that came out. So now, as we go forward and like put some compression and maybe some effects on there, it's gonna sound so much better because we took care of those problem areas in the beginning. It just sets you up for success with the rest of your signal chain, especially in a live mix, to go ahead and get those problem areas taken care of before you try to do anything else. Hey, if you like this tutorial, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons right down there so you don't miss anything. We'll be making a bunch of tutorials like this coming up. Also, be sure to comment what is your biggest live sound issue. We want to make videos that cover exactly what you want to learn. So let us know and we'll make a video about it. Oh, oh, oh.